Okay, let's see. Uh, is anybody from Parody here? Yes. Yeah, Arcade is here, right? I'm here. Yeah, Arcade. Oh, welcome, Arcade. We get, there's someone who, who hasn't set the name also. Yeah, um, if you could go, if you haven't set your name, go to the top left corner, um, and there should be like a little uh, box with a face. Click that and uh, change your display name. Okay, Kamavis, can you hear us now? Yep. It uh, seems to be working great. I haven't used Jitsu before, but this seems nice. Awesome, awesome. A am I pronouncing that right? Because I always have trouble with that name. <laughs> Spot on. Perfect. Okay, I think everybody's here, so let me go ahead and pull up the agenda. And um, yeah, the agenda's in the All Core Devs Gitter. Um, it's in the PM repository. So the first um, item on there is going to be, um, should we set up like a recurring meeting time? Uh, we usually do like a Google Doodle, but um, people have been asking if we can just set up like a, you know, always on this date, this time. So um, a suggestion um, that I had was the first and third Friday of every month at 1400 UTC, so pretty much this time, first and third Friday of every month. Is there anybody who has uh, a better suggestion or anything that's a deal breaker for that time? No, but could you, um, could you link the agenda again, please? Absolutely. Let me send it out on Skype and on Gitter. Awesome, thanks. Uh -huh. Is there any particular reason for doing Fridays instead of Thursdays? Um, because the last few times Fridays seem to be like the least busy for people. Um, but yeah, I'm okay with Thursdays as well. It just kind of depends on what people think. And what we might do is, um, there's going to be some days that you know there's going to be mm -hmm. conflicts with a bunch of people missing, like um, Ed Kong in Paris coming up on the 14th of February, so we'll have to change it, but I was just thinking we try, um, I was just thinking we try Fridays 1400, see how that goes. Would 14 be better, uh, Martin? Um, yeah. Great. For oh, me. I said 14, I meant Thursday. Oh. Yeah, doesn't really matter, but yeah, I, I'd prefer Thursday, but doesn't really matter. Right. I think it's, uh, we could give it a go to book regular ones, and if it doesn't make sense, then we'll skip it. Okay, sounds good. Um, great, so the next item, I'll just start setting that up and like send out invites and stuff. Um, okay, so the next one is Christian about uh, EIP eight and that one is uh the gas cost for return value so christian you can uh take it away thanks so yeah we discussed that for quite some time already and if i remember correctly uh there was a proposal last time which was waiting for the confirmation by parity and our, i think arcadi was present and he said that he's not at liberty to decide about that, did that change in the meantime? No, not really. We haven't discussed it here in detail. But do we have any anyone from Parity right here? But right now. I mean Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I'm Parity. And can you make decisions about the the design of the of the consensus changes in, in parity or not? Yeah, I guess at this point uh, we'll be we'll be happy with anything that you guys decide. Yeah. And we can always have a situation where we can have like a very tentative yes with a twenty four hour or forty eight hour period for kind of final comment on that. Or if um, someone else from the parity team has any issue, we can just let them know to, you know, send in their comments in that time. Yeah, okay. 
So th then I would propose uh, that uh, are we implementing that, right? Yep. And so to be honest, I don't remember the exact details of the two alternatives, but I guess most of the work does not have to do with that single decision. Yeah, um, uh, we're going to be redoing the EIP soon. So Christian, I'll get with you on uh, formalizing that one from an issue to a PR. So then once we get the implementation and we can just reach out to um, all the teams and relevant people about that. Good. Okay, so yeah, um, unless there's any other comment on that one, we can just run on to the next one. Um, also on the left, upper left yeah, well, side. Yeah, just a quick question. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, just quick for for like Jeff and Jeff and Vitalik. What are your guys' thoughts about implementing the uh, return code? Any thoughts? Pros, cons. So it looks like Jeff dropped off for just a second, and I don't know where Vitalik is. Let me see. Oh. Sorry, so what? Was there any question? Uh, everyone, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, Turn off the video to save bandwidth yeah. is what someone's saying. Ah, <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. I'll do that. Uh, yeah, so Jeff, I was wondering if you, you as one of the uh, client implementers, if you have any thoughts about this dynamic return uh, code. Um, I think um, more the same as always. I mean, I mean the same as it was before. I'm, 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 I'm happy to implement this. I think it's fine. I mean, we have been discussing this now for over two or maybe even three um, Eep calls or core calls. Um, I think it's a, I think it's about time that we actually do something. Jeff, could you hear Martin? Sometimes some people cannot hear some other people. Yeah, he he answered. I just answered. oh, then I couldn't hear him. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, Jeff, so, do you hear me, Chris? I hear you. Yeah, yes. Jeff, so, let, he, let me just he, he, it. He's all on board with it. Okay, good. Well, let me just reload quickly. And once hey, Chris, he... can you hear me now? Chris? Yes, now I hear you. Okay. Uh, okay, cool. So I said, um, as in the previous discussions that we have had over the past three, four, I don't know how many um, calls we've had about this, I think it's fine. I think we should implement it. Um, I think we have uh, been postponing this for, for too long. Um, I think... Um, an answer is in, you know, I'm not in the liberty to um, to make a decision. Um, then either you get someone that can make a decision um, or, you know, don't. I mean, you know, we've got to do something. Yeah. Um, so um, if, um, if Gavin is the, the person that can make a decision, get him on the call here. Um, um, and otherwise, you know, I think this has been the third call, the fourth call maybe. I think we should we should just either we should do it we should implement some. Sounds good. Um, so just uh, real quick about the process for these decisions and EEPs. So this was actually the last agenda item, but it's probably better that I bring it up now. Um, the new EIP process has a more defined way of you know getting through EEPs. So there's going to be um, just a little bit more of a formal method. We're still going to be using, you know, just general consensus and meetings like this and other things to, um, you know, come up with if an EAP should move forward. But uh, things aren't going to be waiting in queue for months anymore as long as they have, you know, a pretty general consensus and we can uh, quickly get together with m most of the main parties. 
So, yeah, that should fix things a lot. But, yeah, sounds like uh, everybody's in agreement on that pending. Um, any more comments from Parity? And we, we can check in the All Core Devs channel for that. Oh, on the top left side, because um, I think someone just asked if there is a uh, chat. If you um, open the shared document on the top left, it's like uh, it looks like the little document icon uh, that sh opens up an Etherpad, so we can just use that. And um, I'm taking notes, and I'm gonna uh, release those on the uh, GitHub afterwards. Will you will you be responsible for that? Every call would be good to know. Yes, I'm responsible for that every call, um, unless awesome. otherwise um, stated. So I would just, um, uh, yeah, I'll just let someone know if I'm not here or something, and they can do it. Hey, Roman, can okay. you hear us? Um, yeah, I was, um, I'm Roman, Alex, um, Vitalik. Can you guys hear us? I can hear you, Jeff. Me. Okay, cool. Did oh. you Did you get anything of the conversation that we've just had? Um, I personally dropped out a few minutes ago when someone asked me about the yeah, return gas at EIP-8 and I said that I was fine with like every version of it. Oh, okay. I, I, I actually, I didn't hear you, but cool. No, not anyway. But you can hear us now fine, yes? Yes. Uh, yes. Switch Alex... over to better internet. Yeah, what, we might need to switch okay. to Skype, oh. it looks like, because there's <laughs> enough people who are dropping let me see yeah so i i i mentioned it on on skype as well but so we've been i i'm not i'm not suggesting that we that we do this now but uh, maybe for the next time we um we switch to discord we've had some you know we've had pretty good experience with that so far no dropouts um no weird i mean we've had some weird queries like the ones that we have had right now but uh, things seem to be improving um rapidly um, they seem to be doing a lot of improvements, and they seem to deploy code every now and then. So that's good. Um, Discord, please look into that. Might be uh, 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 might be a way forward. With, Great. Um, yeah, with I, the, I think uh, I think it's default. a good idea. I've used it before. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that uh, because we're having enough trouble. Does anyone know if Skype supports nineteen people? Because I'm like anyone... I'm totally open to uh, trying uh, trying Discord next time around. Yep. I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. I I think it supports up to like I don't know, like ten, maybe, yeah. maybe even less. Okay, we're gonna keep trying this for the time being. Then I'm I'm releasing yes, notes please. after, so um, I'll just let everyone know we we kind of have to go through this way, uh, but list some options for people to troubleshoot. So uh, while that's happening, let's go ahead and the next one is also uh, Christian talking about precompiles for elliptic curve point addition and a number of other um, topics on that. So this is basically about uh, adding precompiles for, for uh, yeah, to enable CK snarks on Ethereum. And uh, I, together with Ariel Gabison, I had some kind of yeah, research session in, in uh, December. And at first we try to keep the, the precompiles as flexible as possible to support multiple curves so that we can uh, switch to different curves if some curves turn out to be bad. Um, but it looks like this can't really be done. There are no generic elliptic curve addition or yeah, in general elliptic curve operation implementations because we would need, so we of course have to assign gas costs to uh, every precompile and there's no way to do that in a, in a really generic uh, fashion. So I would propose to um, concentrate or to, to implement precompiles exactly for the elliptic curve used by Zcash. And in particular, uh, one elliptic, uh, yeah, one elliptic curve um, point addition precompile, one scalar multiplication precompile, and one precompile for the, um, uh, for a pairing function. Um, the okay the, the pairing function perhaps i also should say something there so in general it's a quite complicated thing that maps a a point that takes two points on two different elliptic curves and maps them to a uh, rather complicated uh, um, finite field 
And all of these, in all of these, we uh, could potentially run into representation problems because there's no really, yeah, not, not a unique way to represent elements from these uh, sets. But uh, the good news is that um, we can, instead of implementing this pairing function, we can, it suffices to implement a pairing checker, which uh, basically just returns true or false uh, uh, depending on whether the result is the identity or not in the target group. And that removes the need for a complex, specifying the complex encoding of this complex finite field. And so what remains uh, for the specification is just to um, yeah, uh, fix an encoding for these two elliptic curves, uh, so, so it's for points for these two elliptic curves. And of course, uh, yeah, to assign uh, gas costs for that. Yep, so I have a kind of working group here in Berlin to uh, yeah, work out the details for that. I would like to hear general opinions about, about this from the others. Hey, uh, could you link to the, in the Gitter channel, the um, If we the want IP? to make the some of the precompiles slightly more generic, well, one thing that we could do is we could make the addition and multiplication uh, be, uh, support any curves that uh, have like any B parameter. So the A parameter would be of the curve would be zero, but the B, but the B could be anything. Um, one reason why this kind of slight increase in genericness is nice is because it also covers the sec P two fifty six K one curve that we use already for EC recover. So like we get yeah, for what's probably actually it might even be a zero complexity gain because the addition form in um, formulas are, I believe are independent of B we had yeah, just a bit more support, but that's a fairly small point. So you're saying we can make the, the elliptic curve operations a bit more generic, but not the pairing. Is that correct? I believe so. Making, um, making the pairing more generic, I think might be harder. Yeah, actually, you know what, hold on. Let, let me uh, ch uh, actually check through my code right now. I'm just going to check if they're like where the A's and B's are. By the way, Vitalik, I think you cannot hear Hudson. Is that true? <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I am. I cannot hear. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's not important. But uh, I was just going to say, Christian, could you uh, post a link to this EIP or anything about the specification? Um, but in, in general, I'm fully on board with the <laughs> with, uh, pair, pairing Sorry. implementation. Um, the one thing that's worth adding is, from an implementation standpoint, as uh, I believe Sean does have that uh, pairing implementation in Rust, right? Um, I think so. There should be implementations in Rust and in C++. Yeah. What is the, what does the Go team think people... about... Uh... <laughs> That's how I think about it. No, rather not. So we would need to find either find an implementation or re-implement it in Go? Do you, um, do you have Go yeah, implementations I mean, of the uh, elliptic yeah. of of the easy recover and yeah. stuff? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Well, I mean, so the only C dependency that we have is the uh, uh, are the recovery functions and the signing, obviously. Um, but other than that, we would probably need to implement it ourselves. Um, and as far as I know, Vitalik has already implemented it in Go, so that could serve as a good example. Um, and other than that, you might be able to help if necessary. We'll find a way, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're not too keen on um, C++ dependencies because this kinds of break are complete. Um, uh, um, cross compilability. So that would suck big time because we can right now we can compile to any platform and adding a C++ dependency would probably break that. Yeah, I see. Makes sense. Guitar keeps dropping off things. Yeah. So, um, um, Chris, Hello. what kind of, um, um, can people hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Um, Chris, cool. what kind of dependency um, were you? Vitalik, can you hear me? 
Uh, Christian, can you hear me? No, you can't hear me. So I can hear you, but Jeff cannot hear you. Uh, you cannot hear Jeff. <laughs> okay, what's with Jitsi? Like, it seems like so, uh, like it seems like some pairwise connections, like uh, communications, work, but some pairwise communications don't. Yeah. Like, how do you even make a chat app that like fails in that way? <laughs> it's a peer to peer app. That's the thing. It's not centralized. To be fair, Discord often has the same problem. Okay. Sometimes you get what you pay for. I've always found Google Hangouts to be really quite reliable. Yeah. Yeah, but Google Hangouts doesn't. I think it allows up to fifteen participants. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, we're gonna let's yeah. also look into WebEx, and I'll, I'll look into some paid ones, and I'm taking lead on that after the call. Um, so Chris, what kind of dependency were you looking? Um, were you looking for? So this, so we need a an implementation of the uh, of the precompile uh, of the uh, sorry of the um, pairing function. Yeah, and... we uh, we can we can probably write that in Go. I don't think it should be that much of a problem. Mm. Okay, I mean it's not. So the, the pro side is it's not a uh, sensitive imp implementation, so we don't need to keep track of uh, le uh, leaking side channel uh, data. So it's, it's fine. <laughs> OK. We'll find a way, I'm sure. OK, so it sounds like we have um, Go and C++ and uh, Python um, clients. Um, so. Um, Anton, Roman, or uh, Arcade, could you uh, comment for your teams? No, there's also Rust library, so very good. Yeah, about Zcash and all the abstractions for, for Curve, uh, we, we just started to look at it. We just finished a big release, so I uh, didn't have a chance to actually go into details, but uh, we are okay with, with your decision. Okay. Um. If people want to make an implementation, I mean, you can always uh, feel free to just copy the one I made in Python because it was designed to be kind of both like as readable as possible, even at the at the expense of uh, speed. Um, but yeah. okay, so so Vitalik, you you actually. A suggestion to take Python as a reference implementation. Um, I mean, I'm, uh, I, I'm. Um, hold on. So Java. The, I mean, first of all, I'd, I, I, I would recommend a step one trying to see if there's any pairing implementations written already in Java, and if there aren't, then I guess uh, cop, copying Python. And uh, if uh, if it passes all the like all the tests, and it's probably worth giving it a review. Mm -hmm. Is probably okay. second best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need dive, we need to dive into this. Okay, then. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So also, I sorry, I totally forgot. I see Jan's in here. Jan, what do you think of this? Um, I guess because you work on both uh, Python and Ruby. Oh uh, yeah, I think there should be no problem with Ruby and Python because uh, we can use FFI wrapper to wrap the C library. So yeah, that should be okay. Great. And then um, anyone from Parity, Arcady, or if um, Gav's joined, or anyone at this point? Yeah, can you hear me? I already mentioned that there is a Rust crate, and that works for us. Perfect. OK. Could I, did everyone just hear Arcady? Just want to get a, a kind yeah. of check. OK, cool. So yeah, uh, everyone seems good on that. So we can just check that off and say that that's that. A, that's a lot. Say but that Jeff, one more time. Yeah, Arcade was on board. Yeah, in case you hear me. Perfect. Um, so yeah, we can we can check that one off. Um, so the next thing, and this one is going to take a little bit. Um, the agenda that I posted, if everyone could go there during this conversation, there are about five links for the EIPs that Vitalik's going to be discussing. Uh, he's going to be talking about Metropolis, but uh, real quick before we do that. Um, what is, because I know Martin posted that the difficulty bomb is about three months away. Is that still the case? Um, well, it did, it's not so much a bomb, it's an ice age, right? So, like, the it never explodes. It just kind of becomes, the, uh, the block time becomes worse and worse, and the uh, security becomes worse and worse over time. So, like, three months is where it starts to become noticeable. 
I think actually hold on let me just get my script out again and I'll just uh read it out again um yeah, but basically this conversation topic is about the impending Ice Age, um, sometimes called Difficulty yeah, Bomb, but yeah, Ice Age, and then also uh, Metropolis going forward. Okay, so from what I have, um, in exactly three months from now, so around March 25th, the block time is going to go up to 15.2 seconds, so that's about 6% up. Then six months from now, so like uh, around July 25th, the block time will be up to uh, 29.7 seconds. So, like, between three to six months is where it starts to kind of um, substantially manifest itself. Okay, cool. So, interesting. Um, so, I guess, um, does anyone have any questions or concerns about that we're going to have a number of core dev meetings in between that time and it sounds like we're coming along with some of the metropolis planning so if there's no other concerns about that specifically vitalik you can go ahead with the metro uh, eips you were going to discuss sure i mean from these five i think um i'm pretty sure we discussed almost all of them already so like eip 86 as the abstraction changes so I recall us discussing this several times in previous meetings. Um, basically allows a new transaction type that's uh, kind of more, basically it has a, a, a sender of zero. And then it, it also has a uh, two extra um, transaction uh, it, it has two extra features which uh, basically modify the scheme that's used to determine the uh, determine an address of, of a contract. Basically, the moving from sender and nonce to um, sender and code. And uh, like this, like we uh, we talked about all of this, and I I, mean, I recall from last time that people generally found the. Uh, found the idea acceptable um there were a couple of versions of this but uh, as i recall we uh, ended up like one version be, like basically there's one of the issues that you started getting is like what if you try to uh what if there's an existing contract that calls create in such a way that it tries to like create many t a, co a contract with the same code many times and you don't want to break existing stuff unless you absolutely have to so the debate was between having a very complicated scheme that, that checks for that. It automatically tries to jump to a different address versus just having like a new create opcode. Like, like I called it create P2SH, but like you can call it create whatever. And I recall the opinion being more toward creating a new opcode because it's just like cleaner. Um, that, so that's, then after that, there's the EIP 96, which is uh, basically trying to kind of on the, also on the abstraction roadmap, trying to take block hashes and state roots and move them kind of into the formal state rather than being something that requires sort of extra infrastructure to uh, try to, um, to try to access from inside the VM. Then there's also, uh, I, I recall us previously talking about um, EIPs for elliptic curve addition and multiplication, but like uh, that's that's now kind of being rolled into the pairing discussion, so I'm not worried about that. Then EIP 101, so this is uh, big into arithmetic, and I uh, which so um, hold on. Instead of an opcode, can we cannot we have a yeah, pre-compile for creation? Um, that's worth con I guess worth considering. Um, although uh, matches well with how Wasm would operate. Okay, I mean I'm happy to take that discussion offline, but it's. Uh, so I think at some point we uh, well, agree basically that... I think the question there is is uh, whether or not like the question is do we have more opcodes versus uh, do we have precompiles that have a new kind of spec like this would basically be our first uh, impure precompile. Um, no, I can't hear Christian. 
Yeah, I was about to um, what, use, yeah, impure. That's the exact what's Christian the, saying. <clears throat> oh, I think he was just clarifying uh, the definition of a um, of a term. So uh, he, he'll probably just put that in chat in a second. Is, okay, cool. Is this on one of the EIPs? Um, yes. So the block hash and hold on, I think. Um, EIP here. Right, exactly. Such a that's what I was getting at. That basically, if you have a create precompile without ha without having a create opcode, then you have a precompile that cannot even theoretically be implemented in VM code. And like this is a sort of fundamentally new kind of complexity. So that was the kind of best argument to get uh, in favor of just making it an opcode for the time being. What's the the EIP number? I I don't see it um, in the chat anywhere. Um, this is uh, eighty six. Yeah. So on the um, I I just posted GitHub slash Ethereum slash PM issues three, that has a list of all five that Vitalik's talking about from what I've been able to keep up with. So, uh, it's not in the order on the page, but it's they're they're all in there. The links. Okay, and it sounds like Alex just clarified. Yeah, I, I, I got it. I just uh, hadn't read that part of the conversation. Yeah. Great. So yeah, uh, was that all so, the EIPs, Vitalik? I didn't know. I was, wasn't keeping Hold on, so just to, just to keep going through all of them fully. So with EIP 101, big integer arithmetic, um, so... Uh, the reason why, uh, hold on, let me just finish answering a uh, question. Oh, cool. What about EAP 98? Let me just check over this. Um, ah, yes. Um, very good point. EAP 98. Yeah, EP ninety eight is going to screw over the light client though. Uh, Jeff, was that you talking? Yes, that was me. Okay, great. You did not hear me. Oh no, I heard you. I was just making sure when I tell Vitalik, Vitalik, can you hear Jeff? Um, I uh, Jeff, can you say something? Yeah, I don't think you can hear me because I just did. Maybe not. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, let me see. <laughs> yeah, it almost might be worth me just throwing in a Google Hangout link because everyone's on Google for their projects. Do you think that's worth it, anybody? I feel like it'd be like a couple minute delay, but yeah. Uh, if you do, if you do, make sure you send it from an apps account because apparently apps accounts twenty five, but regular Gmail accounts are two. Oh, you you said from an X account? Wait, which kind of apps, account? Google Apps, as in Ethereum dot org account, for instance. Ah, got it. Okay, so yeah, let me. I'll start that up uh, while we're still having this discussion over talk and chat, and then when there's kind of a stopping point with Vitalik's comments um I'll, I'll just send out the link and get everyone switched over so yeah uh, vitalik um i think uh yeah you just got all that so yeah vitalik's talking in chat and it looks like the eip yeah, they're gonna go over. Um, the EIP ninety, well, EIP ninety eight is like controversial for and uh, or at least like not not fully settled at the moment. But we'll discuss we'll discuss it uh, offline. Um, 
Hold on, which other one? Yeah, so uh, um, the other thing I wanted to finish off on is uh, 86. Okay, I almost got the hangout up. And let's hope that. So, a video call. Great, here we are. Alright, I'm putting it in the Jitsi link. I'm also putting it in Skype and Gitter. What are we supposed to do? Uh, everyone switched to Google Hangouts. I just put the link in, and we have confirmation tentatively that uh, it supports up to 25 people, and we have less than that. Okay. Hello, can people online hear me? E yes, I can hear yep, you, Vitalik. Yeah, Vitalik. Oh, yay! This is much better. I can't um, hear Vitalik now. Yeah. Hmm. Nick, you used to work for Google. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, you were talking on Hangouts, right? Oh, yep. I should get off Jitsi. So testing, can can you hear me? Yes, absolutely, we can hear you. Okay, great. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, looks like Nick's on. We have mm, a lot of people, so we have most people. Casey's joining. Let me see. Um. Okay. Wait. I'll wait a couple minutes. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. it won't take that long. We have most people here. Yep. Uh, let's see. Kamavis, did you get in here? Hello, test test. Yep, I can hear. I can hear you, Jeff. Awesome, thanks. Okay. Let me just make sure. Uh, Arcade, can you hear? Yeah, I can hear fine. Perfect. And then we have uh, Alex Berigzazi, Yoichi, Alex Vanderson, Casey, Christian, Jan. Okay, this is representative of every major client. So, uh, Vitalik, if you wanted to continue. So, basically, what we just did for mm -hmm. those who didn't hear um, is go over some EIPs for Metropolis. Yeah, yeah so um, how about I'll just uh, kind of uh, recap a few things because it looks like there are lots of bilateral communication problems. Sure. Um, so I'll throw this into the chat. And the other thing is, um, hold on. Ooh, that, okay, that doesn't seem to work well. But basically, there's five EIPs uh, that some people seem to be looking at 86, 96, 98, 100, or 6, 101, 140. So 86 is general abstraction. And uh, 
base which has two components to it one of which basically says if you send a transaction from that whose signature is zero then it's assumed to be sent from the zero address the second and there would also be like client side minor logic that says uh in, uh what was it uh if that would like provide some extra conditions for accepting transactions like that but that's not something we need to have consensus on so that's like not really any ip then the second part of uh, eip86 is this uh, uh rule change for how to generate addresses for contracts and uh 96 uh or sorry and it seems like the pa like there there are a few paths with a few different trade offs, and it seems like the one people are most happy with is adding in this uh, kind of new create off code that follows the new rules, and then figuring out how to deprecate the old one safely. Then uh, the EIP ninety eight basically removes intermediate state routes, which has its pros. It does have a couple of con uh, of cons, and we decided to that like. Myself and Jeff and whoever else is interested will like, take it offline and uh, discuss at some point to figure out if it's actually worth it. Then uh, EIP 101, just to skip ahead a bit, is uh, basically big int uh, computation. It, now, like my person, I mean, I originally uh, proposed this, and the original rationale basically was that there's at least a few people that need to use RSA, and we might as well make it generic and like support various kinds of big int based crypto. Um, my current position is that if we're doing this, I think modular exponentiation itself should be enough. So basically don't bother with multiplication and don't bother with addition. My reasoning basically being that addition is probably quick and like of the three exponentiation is the only one where you actually really might need the optimization. As an addition, you can just do fairly easily in EVM. Multiplication, you can do any VM. It's quadratic, but like it's still not too bad. Or if you want, you can basically do like you can convert a multiplication into two modular squarings and then use the exponentiation free compile for that. So there's like two fairly accessible paths for it. Um, so basically, the question is like whether or not to add this. Um, so like the, the main users would be, I mean, like. Oracle Eyes is one example, and there's a few others. Like, gen there's just a lot of, a at least some cases, where if people want to like verify existing like cryptography that comes from outside of Ethereum, and that cryptography happens to be either RSA or something big, uh, something uh, big integer based. Then, one hundred. So this was in response to a yeah, vulnerability disclosure. Uh, a bug report made by Sergio Lerner, where he pointed out an incentive flaw that basically encur encourages um, mine large mining pools to mine uncles. And the solution is that instead of targeting a fixed block time, we would target a fixed, uh, or instead of targeting a, a fixed time between block number increments, we would target a fixed time between blocks, including uncles. And there's like a slight formula change. It's like one line of code that'll give us that. Um, then EIP 140, and I threw it in because I feel like we haven't discussed it enough, but it's interesting, which is uh, Nikolai's idea of uh, basically a throw up code that doesn't uh, that that doesn't just like just burn all of the, all of the gas that's uh, given given to a sub call. So like that's basically it. I mean, I, 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 if also I guess at the at the same time, I know there's a bunch of stuff that we've uh, discussed over the last like six months of these calls, so maybe there's stuff I missed that's worth bringing up again. So the reversion, the 140, seems to be particularly dangerous where um, mm -hmm. reverting state comes at no price. Um, it does come at some cost because, like, it doesn't give you 100% of the gas back. Like, it's you, like the idea is that you would still lose the gas that you spent, um, but you would... Uh, but you would get back the gas that you haven't spent yet. But wait a sure, second, didn't, so... we, didn't we already, don't we already have the situation that we have to implement it at no cost? Because, I mean, you can have a throw after you run out of gas, so it has to be exactly. charge. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. The one thing I'm, so that might be dangerous with this is that 
Currently, we can do some kind of sloppy gas uh, counting when we hit a out of gas. Mm. And I mean, it's not, this is not really an out of gas. So it's an, an, right. it's an specific opcode. So it might not be too, uh, too difficult to do that. Hmm. And so uh, I have to admit, I didn't read the, I haven't read that, that proposal. Does it include some kind of error code you can also supply? Because that was also requested uh, quite often. I'm not sure if that proposal has. I mean, it might make sense to, um, let's see. It says details, extra things to consider. It would be useful to pass back a return value to be interpreted as an error. Um, this is a nice to have. Yeah, so there's a, so there is a kind of proposed extension to it that would, uh, make throw have one argument that would be like the value that gets that gets pushed back onto the stack i'll just paste the link here um yeah i'm, I'm happy to implement this oh. i'm uh yeah yeah mm -hmm. i'm for I, i'm supportive but uh Although, like, although, yeah, I, I would add that if we end up running into a time crunch, then it, this it probably is one of one of the ones that's the that that I'd be willing to sacrifice pushing off till uh, till Serenity. But like, I guess we'll see. Um, I have a quick question. To be clear, um, yeah. you had talked before, or I had seen some discussion about um, having. I think it was either Serenity or Metropolis in phases especially to phase mm -hmm. in the bigger pick, uh, features. Is that for only Serenity or Metropolis as well? Um, I think, um, hmm, let me think. I, I remember talking about Serenity and phases. I mean, I remember Metropolis being, ah, uh, no. So the time when I broke that I was proposing breaking up Metropolis into part one and part two was when we thought that we would do a DAO fork and like if we're going to do, or sorry, when uh, we were debate first discussing the idea of not the DAO fork, a uh, fork to fix the DOS issues, and I brought up the idea of, well, hey, if we're going to hard fork, we might as well knock off a few other items. Um, gotcha. And we decided not to do too much of that, but like even still, actually, we did implement a, co uh, a, a couple of the uh, EIPs that uh, made me fairly happy. So like that was intended to be kind of Metropolis uh, step one, if it would be. But like at this point, it seems like uh, one step is probably. All right, sounds great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is discussing the list of of changes you want to include for Metropolis, or is this just a no? This list is of changes that is just consider at all. You know, this is uh, discussing the possibility of making like Metropolis Part One and Metropolis Part Two. No, I mean the the, and... the list of of VIPs you you gave is that. Your proposal to oh, include no, exactly that, that was, into Metropolis, or? Well, no, that was, I mean, a lot, some of them are mine, but like some of them uh, aren't. So, like, 140 is from Nikolai, but uh, like a lot of, the, like, most of them are things that we had already discussed and that I recall us kind of tentatively already agreeing are okay for Metropolis. So, yeah, they are all about Metropolis, Christian. They're all potentially to be included in Metropolis pending further discussion. Sure. So what my question more aims at is, are we also discussing that, or does this also uh, imply that others are not included or not? Um, so w are there any, um, look, what other EIPs are there that uh, have been discussed that we're not, uh, that we're not considering for Metropolis? Yeah, I think so I would like to ha at least have the 5.8 for Metropolis. Okay. Um, 5.8, that's the return gas thing, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, I think we were all supportive of that. I mean, perhaps we should. Sorry, can you, can, you, can you repeat it? Broke up for me. I mean, it, we said that uh, the return gas is probably also part of Metropolis. But in, in general, so. Yeah, I mean, how do we decide what is included in Metropolis and the time frame, especially? So. Shouldn't we rather discuss that uh, things to be 
so th that that we should start implementing stuff and then if something turns out to be extremely hard to implement then potentially postpone it or and things that are easier to implement to uh include or i don't know i think that's a good idea christian uh, is there a way to maybe do point values or something relative to say the difficulty of each eip that uh, vitalik's listed out and then the uh, 58 that you just mentioned is that something that should be done in this call or would be very quick to say you know for each client you know how fast would it be for you to do this to kind of get an idea um i mean first of all i guess uh, the first thing is uh, do we have like a just a list of all of these uh, EIPs that we're considering in one place. Is that somewhere in the uh, repo or docs or thread, Hudson? Um, I've never seen that document. Um, I thought I don't maybe... Think that, I don't think that document exists, but that sounds like a document that should Oh, exist. I see what you're saying. Yes, we can definitely do that. In the PM repository, we have a folder called Metropolis now, and we can also set up an okay. issue. So post-call, and... I'll set that up. Cool. I mean, it doesn't need to be something like a really formal and fancy. It basically just needs to yeah, be like, just a, like a, an a, issue. Yeah, that would work. Um, I mean, theoretically, even like a, yeah, an, an Etherpad page would also be fine if we can find a version of Etherpad that stays up. <laughs> yep, exactly. So, or maybe even a combination. So, yeah, Christian, to answer your question, um, since we're going to start having these every two weeks, that should be something, especially for the next um, agenda, to say, you know, everyone you know between now and the next meeting see if any of these are going to be too difficult to get done in you know x amount of time uh so actually speaking of time just because this is something we can probably you know decide pretty much today what would be the approximate time for metropolis now that we know that the ice age is coming Well, as last time we, um, I would rather not rush it as we did last time. So um, I would like to have ample time for testing. Mm -hmm. Good call. So I guess it's more dependent on, or I guess what I'm trying to say is we can, you know, figure this out or the minimum stuff, the next core dev meeting, if it's in three months or if it's in six months, because I think you gave that time frame, right, Vitalik? Yeah. So um, I think a good strategy for this, and I, obviously I want everyone else's opinion, is to kind of come up with a minimum viable metropolis, I guess, uh, before or mm -hmm. during the next all core dev meeting based on a lot of feedback between now and then for EIPs. And then using mm -hmm. that, we can say, you know, for testing time and for just general implementation, how long things will take. And then I think it'll just kind of organically come out of that what will be in Metropolis. Mm -hmm. So yeah, would, would that satisfy your kind of um, feelings about the uh, uh, testing time, Jeff? Sorry, could you repeat? You broke up. Oh, no problem. I think it's my, inter I think it's my internet connection. I'll just blame you in, in, either way. Uh, <laughs> so um, I, what I was saying is I think that if we come up between now and then with like a page that just says EIP, you know, time to implement, time to test estimate, and then give ourselves a ton of time on that, uh, we can safely create a list of EIPs we definitely want to get to before Metropolis, and then yep. some like maybe one or two stretch goals uh, as far as yep, yep, yep. the EIPs. So, yep. Yes, sounds good to me. Okay, so yeah, we'll we'll I'll do that uh, post call. Just kind of start that document sometime today. Uh, so yeah, uh, did you have any uh, other EIPs or uh, places to go with the discussion, Vitalik? Um, I mean, those were all that I had. But then, I mean, I also wanted to bring up static call, but that seems like that's number five on the agenda anyway. Great. Anyone else have Metropolis uh, topics uh, before we move on to static call? Hmm. Okay, great. Uh, then we can move on to. S oh, anyone? There's another item before static call that just. Oh, yep, you're right. Sorry, I skipped one. Um, Martin, uh, if you could bring up the um, general state test, I believe that was one that um, Dimitri wrote. Uh, Dimitri, are you in the call? Hello, could you hear me? 
Yes, I can. Perfect. And you can hear us? Oh, yeah. That's fine. Finally. <laughs> yes, definitely. Oh, this, this thing works from my phone. Yeah, so this EIP is one that uh, Dimitri wrote. And uh, Martin, if you want to start, because you're listed as facilitator. I have uh, problems hearing you just uh, um, bad connection, maybe. So you suggest me to start discussing the new test? Uh, I think, I think Martin. Oh, I think Martin Hulswinde was going to start because he had a, I, I don't know what direction he was going to start the conversation with, but yeah, if both of you could speak on it. But uh, Martin, are you here? Oh, he might be dealing with something right now. So yeah, go go ahead, Dimitri. If you could just um, I have the link in here. It's EIP one six or EIP one seventy six. So uh, take it away. Oh man, you sound like a robot to me. Oh sorry. <laughs> yeah, if you could you could just start talking about one seventy six. I Martin's not on right the second. Okay, so you could hear me well, right? I can hear you yeah. just fine. Martin, did you get back on? Yeah, Martin, we can hear you. Sorry. The point was that as a client developer should start implementing the general state test proposal that I mentioned on the EAB on GitHub. Uh, because we have lots of tests in this. All previous tests are converted into a new general state test. It's basically changing the point. And uh, recently we have added more new tests for state reversion and so on. So we really want to see how other clients are doing with this test. Mm -hmm. What are the results? Okay, so you were saying you wanted feedback from other clients about how they're doing the uh, test? Might be better use chat. Yeah, that might be an offline thing, but yeah, that's that's a good that's a good strategy. And um, it looks like yeah, that, that's a pretty that's an active EIP thread. So uh, if we could just uh, recommend everybody to go to that EIP thread and um, uh, make comments on it, I think that might move it along a little bit. And it looks like Martin's still having connection problems. Uh, Martin, can you hear us now? Yeah, you still sound like a robot. And I could barely hear you. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, Jeff, can we you not can hear you anymore? Skype. Yeah. Yeah, no, I was I was just typing to um to Martin. Um, just ignore. Ah, got it. Okay. Um, in that case, uh, yeah, what what we can just have that on pause until Martin gets back. Uh, but Dimitri, I think I think um, basically you're saying take conversation offline for that EIP. Uh, Dimitri, can you hear me? Yes, uh, just barely. So what oh. is the question? Maybe you could type it in That's Skype and then I could respond to you. I can hear you just fine. That's right. Testing, testing. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I can hear you. All right. I guess it's a device not too powerful. Uh, yeah, we can just chat. We can text chat then, Dimitri. Uh, Martin, uh, since you're mm -hmm. on now. Uh, can you hear me? Yep, I can yeah, hear so, you. So the reason that I wanted to bring this up was but I wanted some clear go or no go from the client developers uh, if they're okay to move on with the general state test. And if they have any objections, please raise them. Otherwise, just say go and we can know that it's on. Yeah, um, so I was, I was looking at it the other day and um, I had a few suggestions um, that I think we should be discussing over. I don't want to discuss them now because it's, it's taking up too much time. I think we should move on to um, to other things. This can definitely be done offline on the on the all core devs channel. Um, it's just mainly adding some extra fields that might be helpful, uh, and that's all. So we can discuss that offline. I definitely think it's a good idea, and I think we should move, be moving forward with this. Um, but as I said, 
I have some suggestions. Yeah. Great. Perfect. Okay, yep, we'll do this offline, and then next all core dev meeting, we will collect all sentiment. By then, the EIP will probably be done anyway, and we can just finalize it next all core dev meeting. Um, so, yeah, we can move on from there to static call. So, Christian, go ahead. Um, yeah, right. So, um, this is a proposal about, uh, yeah, kind of adding new call up codes again, <laughs> which restrict the, the virtual machine that inside that call and in all sub calls to modify the state. Um, and in addition, uh, there might also be an extension that even restricts uh, the callee to read from the state, which would make the uh, it a um, yeah a pure function. I mean, in, in general, I think uh, there's a lot of benefit of making call a bit more parametric to restrict what callees can do but we have to find a solution so that we don't need uh, a new opcode for every single thing. So perhaps you could also combine delegate call and all these, these combinations there. I know uh, Gav had a, an EIP somewhere for a new opcode called interrupt, where the idea would be that uh, the basic would be like a new kind of one call opcode to rule them all. And it would just have as one of its arguments be a bit field that, uh, represents the various flags. Yeah, the, the problem with with that these flags being an argument is that it's hard to do static analysis on that. Mm, and that's I a good think point. it would be better to, to move that into an immediate argument or something like that. If we right, if, okay. if we go to multi byte opcodes anyway, then that okay. would be a solution. That's um a good point though I will point out that uh, like static call is implementable with like easy to medium difficulty, but if we start going in that direction, then the complexity starts racking up. So hmm. there's the usual kind of expediency purity trade off. And static analysis is generally difficult anyways. How does one approach make static analysis easier than the other? Um, because with uh, different opcodes or with an immediate argument, you statically know what kind of call it's going to be. And so you can more easily do things like statically verify that particular functions are pure. So, so that, that's inline. That, that's not for debugging and development. That's, that's for the essentially for the for the val for the validator to be able to optimize validation yeah in validation um well kind of uh, verification checking debugging like all those things so okay. one one use case would be these these entry contracts so uh these these abstract uh, accounts and if you use a static call there, then the miner doesn't have to uh, look what is called. The miner can, can uh, immediately know that uh, the state didn't change. Yeah. 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 So, so the, so the complexity is, 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 if, if we don't know what it is, then we may have to have some type of refund mechanism for the, for, balanced gas cost but if we know what it is then just this is, so am, am i going down the right path there well in, in any case it's it's a nice eip so it sounds like either solution could be discussed in the in, in the comments mm -hmm. I mean, not necessarily in the comments, also just offline over the next uh, one or two weeks.
Okay, so um, it looks like that that's going to be um, brought to 116, and um, there's more discussion to be had on that. And then by the next all core dev meeting, we'll have that as a top agenda item along with um, Metropolis mm -hmm. to um, decide mm -hmm. on. Does that sound good, Christian? Yeah, sure. Great. Okay, so we'll have everyone uh, included in that EIP to look at. The next one is uh, Christian with EIP 141, the EVM opcode for invalid instructions. And I felt like we talked about this earlier in the call, but it might be it might have been something different. So this 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 is this is not not actually a consensus change, but more like a agreement. Um, Solidity would like to change its behavior uh, for reversion. So the, the, the thing is, we want to distinguish an explicit throw from things like arithmetic overflow or array out of bounds access. And for one of them, we want to keep the, the jump to invalid jump test. And for the other, we want to uh, use an invalid opcode. And uh, the question is just, is it safe to assume that uh, we don't break any compatibility by assuming that this opcode 0xEF will always be invalid? And Serpent uses 0xFE, but like I, I'm fine with keeping both of those inaccessible or like always invalid. What's the benefit of the proposal, Christian? Like basically, the, it's like an, an agreement not to have future hard forks that make some one particular currently invalid opcode do something, ah, okay. with the understanding that like programs can safely use that opcode, knowing that it's basically a kind of throw. Okay, I get it now. So I mean, I can also just use FE. <laughs> no. Alex, I think you initially created that EIP, is that mm -hmm. right? What was the reason to, to choose EF? Oh, he just says plus one in chat. Let me see if he can talk. All right, Alex just gave a shout out to the Ethereum Foundation in chat, or he was talking about uh, he might have to be logged into that account to talk. I don't think that's mm -hmm. the case. Oh, oh, zero EF is equal to Ethereum Foundation. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, so yeah, it sounds like he well, can't Well, zero like that is the Ethereum Foundation in French, so take that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you already use FE, then I'll also use yeah, FE we, not to waste yeah. any opcodes. Just waiting for Reddit to yell about centralization again if we do that, but I, I'm, yeah, that's, that's worth it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, it sounds like we will continue that discussion on the EIP, um, and there's a few key people who um, have some thoughts on that. So uh, any other comments on that from anybody? But so, I mean, I, I would like to use that from, from now on because it's not a consensus change. So is everyone fine with uh, keeping FE uh, unimplemented or invalid? No problem. Yep. Oh, uh, keeping or keeping invalid, Alex, I think, is asking. No, keeping invalid because it's invalid now. Martin is saying that we should use the same as Serpent. Yeah, I think Vitalik mentioned that's how it's already implemented in Serpent, right, Vitalik? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. It looks like we have consensus on that. That's Yeah, and that's not even an EIP, mm -hmm. is it? Let me see. It's an uh, EIP IP, ah. EIP improvement proposal. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, so, sorry, just uh, just a quick question. What um, uh, what about the static call? Um, we are going to decide that later, um, or are we going to decide later how we're going to do future 
calls. Mm. It's a bit unclear to me. Not clear to me either. Um... Because the so I mean you know we we could quickly discuss the implementation details of static call. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think we need to uh, move yeah. it necessarily to another meeting to just discuss this topic. We can have yeah. calling conventions and stuff like that on another call, but mm -hmm. I think it is important to discuss static call. Now. Agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Christian, if you don't mind taking that back over again and just outlining it, um, kind of like Jeff's saying, um, or Jeff, if you want to take it, either one. I mean, no, I mean, um, I'm, I'm happy with this static call um, to begin with. Oh, it's just um, up down. Got it. But, but do you want it to, so do you prefer it to be a, a new opcode or, or not? Uh, you know, just uh, apart from, apart from that, um, having i mean shouldn't we be discussing whether we want to have a set of call at all okay what's your opinion uh, on that like i said i'm i'm completely fine with having a having a set of call but i don't know about anyone else oh yeah right. jeff just wanted consensus from others so it sounds like exactly. Talix good christian's good jeff's good uh can we hear from uh java, java. so, so perhaps Anton, uh, maybe I mean, static all is this a basic question, and and also, what about a pure call, which is a, yeah, pure function that cannot read state apart from the code? Yeah, we 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 are we are following, we are good. Oh, hey, Roman, welcome. Um, so yeah, and then... I'm here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> regarding oh, we, pure we um, regarding pure call, um, one challenge is that. In my opinion, pure call implemented that way would still be not quite pure because the con contract can contract code is technically mutable because contracts can start existing and they could get suicided. Um, the thing that the thing that I would prefer is I have an opcode that I already use in uh, some of in my Casper POCs, which is called call black box, which just like directly takes a piece of code and a piece of data as an argument, and uh, so basically two byte slices. But I think there might be an EIP for for it somewhere, and it. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. So you're right. I mean, code is part of the state, so it, yeah. it can read that. Um, yeah, I have to think yeah. about it. I mean, the thing is that mm -hmm. pure maps slides nicely into what we're doing with Solidity currently sure. or planning. Yeah. No. I, so, so I think. Uh, I mean, what we what we we could do is uh, like I don't think that uh, having it be address based necessarily has any benefits because like if you have it take two memory slices, you can always just grab the code if you really wants to grab it by yeah uh, call co uh, by yeah exe code copying it. So it's. Uh, just all right, I see. Is... Okay, yeah. So you do a you do read from uh, store. You do read from the state to grab the code, and then you execute in the pure way, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, it sounds like um, yeah. I think most people want static calls. Is that is that um, am I hitting that right? Yeah. Mm hmm. I think most people want both static call and some kind of pure call or black box call or something in that category. Cool. So, yep. Anyone opposed? No, I, I like the black box idea. Um, two slices containing the code and data. Yeah, and we need uh, to. But a, and, and, need and to... Oh, in, in addition to that, I think having a set of call where you can read but not necessarily write to state mm -hmm. would be. Yeah helpful yeah okay so let's get some formal eips on that um and again i'm gonna send uh, everybody really soon what the new eip template is it's very similar to the old one though so as long as y'all just kind of follow that it'll be good enough um okay. i think there already is are some eips on that but just yeah kind of digging them up and putting them for the uh like maybe in the meeting notes or something so that i can reference this mm -hmm. that'd be great so um, also, we since we have a bunch of I forget is these is this like new AIP format 
still it's not using issues in the same way anymore is it like it's like yes so um and yeah that's the last topic but i can just run through it really quick yeah uh, how it's how the new eip process is and it's actually not new it's actually just enforcing kind of how it currently is with a few updates um the template's similar uh it's going to um uh, the template for the eip is similar it's going to have a section for like plain text um like not, when i say plain text i mean like um human readable what this eip is about so someone just like with not as much technical or or specific ethereum technical knowledge can know what the impact of it is uh, or the proposed impact uh, additionally uh, just a few more clarifications in there to avoid um, issues like we had in the last hard fork with um, different implementations implementing it different ways um, and then also moving it to PRs helps with um, uh, tracking the changes so for instance there's been a few EIPs where changes were discussed in different channels like Skype and then not updated on the main EIP uh, so then there was some miscommunication there so it's pretty much just to get clarity of communication and to uh, help streamline the process so the um, process is when you have an idea um, put it in an issue and you can discuss it in the issue uh, talk about whatever you want it can be as simple as one line it can be as complex as a whole template like PR style template and then when you want to actually move your EIP into like a draft status make a PR for it um, now github allows you to make PRs like within the repo so you don't even have to I don't even think you have to clone um, the whole repo anymore but a lot of people will be more comfortable doing that uh, and then there's just a it's pretty much just kind of how it uh, was before I think we took out a few um, of the we took out a few of the uh, labels so instead of like approved and accepted there's just accepted now uh, I'm going to post the link to all of the uh, change discussion and at the very top um, there is all of the um, there is all of the um, details of the changes. Okay, yeah, Nick just corrected me. You do have to clone, but you can do everything through the web interface. And then finally, uh, let's see. There's one more thing. Oh, yeah, we changed it to four subtypes. So we've been having a lot of ERCs come through, like the token standard so um, and the ENS standard. So we're going to have those version now. So whenever there's uh, an EIP, a subcategory of that can be an ERC, and you would have like the token standard version one, and then once consensus has been met, uh, uh, you can go ahead and um, just kind of approve that as you know an approved EIP slash ERC, and then when you want to update that, you would make a version two. Um, there's also yeah, the, tr the tracks now are core networking interface and ERCs. So yeah, if you just go to that link I sent, um, oh, the things that are going to be most interesting are the future goals, which is having a signaling system using blockchain and GitHub so that you can uh, go in and a smart contract will automatically fill in uh, current EIPs and you can uh, submit votes uh, that are just you know plain weighted, not weighted by coins or anything. Uh, about how you feel of, about them, uh, like approve or disapprove, and we might even have groups set up and things like that. And then um, something that like a node.green that will um, check for compliance of EIPs. So I just posted a link to it. So something that looks like that, but for any EIP we discuss uh, cross client uh, compatibility. So yep, just kind of a mouthful of stuff. Uh, again, go to that link and uh, that'll give you all the information you need. So yeah, we just got through static call. Um, we're going through EIP 141. Or actually, we just did that. Was that uh, finished up, Christian, or should we go back to that? No, that was finished. Okay, perfect. Um, and then the last, the second to last one, difficulty bomb, and we already discussed that. Um, so yeah, uh, and then, yep, I just went over the new EIP process. So if anyone has comments on the EIP process, it's not final. Uh, a core group of people who have been um, active and wanting to change it and, uh, you know, help out with the changes have been discussing it, but anyone can jump in. Uh, additionally, uh, the list of editors it currently stands is, let me pull them up, because this is also kind of an important thing. 
Right now the editors are myself, uh, Martin, um, Martin Beasy, Vitalik, Jeff, Gav, Roman, Fabian, and Casey DiTrio. Um, so I've talked to most of you guys, but Roman, uh, do you feel fine being an editor um, on the EIPs still? You were set as one initially, but I'm just kind of checking with all the editors. Yeah, sure. Perfect. Okay. So we'll we'll start getting some communication for that uh, with the, kind of the responsibilities. Jeff said he's fine. Uh, Vitalik, you're cool staying that? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I'll talk to Fabian because I don't think he's on the call, and I'll talk to Je uh, Gav, and then Casey's good. Okay, so yeah, that's all uh, for the EIPs. Expect that in the next two weeks at the latest. Hopefully it'll happen this week. Well, thanks for um, thanks for coordinating, um, Hudson. I appreciate it. And I also appreciate the works being done in the uh, the EAP streamlining, streamlining process. It's oh. very nice. We oh. needed that. Thanks, Jeff. And yeah, actually, the Casey and Nick and... Um... Uh, Greg and a bunch of other people have been helping out. So, uh, yeah, we've been having hours of Skype convos, so they, they should be thanked as well. Good job, guys. All right, so, yeah. Thank you. That That's all of the um, – uh, oh, yeah, so Casey asks, is there a clear statement on point seven for the difficulty bomb? I think if I remember correctly, it was three to six months, depending on mm -hmm. certain factors, Vitalik. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wonderful. Um, in that case, is there anything else uh, anyone wants to talk about? We're just under an hour and a half, which is perfect, and uh, I think everything's checked off the list. Well, what's the status of Swarm, Jeff or Vitalik? Do you, do you know? We're we're um, we. I don't. We're I don't think it's. Soon. Yeah, well, I don't think it's really um, necessary to talk about that now. Um, there is a Swarm room on Gitter. Um, feel free to ask those questions over there. I, to be honest, I don't know the exact set as I know it's operating on the um, on the testnet and uh, it's semi-functional. But uh, yeah, go ahead and jump into the uh, Swarm Gitter room. It's public. Yeah, it's working for me. Um, it has some good. It's had a little bit of hiccups, but it's working pretty well right now, from what I can tell. Yeah, I, I have a question. So, uh, if you guys can hear me, can you? I can hear you. Yeah. So my question is. Do we, are, is the plan to kind of move forward organically with this, or is someone going to propose an actual plan for the coming six months if it's going to be one fork or two forks and what's um, going to be included? I think it sounds like the very near term plan is like after this call for uh, developers to kind of start uh, implementing uh, these. Uh, uh, at least the EIPs that we have a very clear consensus on and to continue kind of discu and discussing amongst each other to uh, continue uh, to uh, like, like research the path for impl uh, implementing pairings and uh, hopefully we'll uh, keep coordinating and within the next uh, two, one or two weeks or so we'll have a much better idea of uh, kind of what the priority list is. Yeah, so I just made an issue in the project management repository, so I'll fill in kind of the info at the top of there. The main goals of that is going to be uh, deciding definitely what is required for the next hard fork, um, rough timelines to then finalize timelines, hopefully by next all core dev meeting or as soon as possible, and uh, come up with time estimates for the how long EIPs can take to implement and how long they would take to test. Uh, on a per client basis, so um, I can round up everybody for that. That's not going to be too bad because we're all in the same Gitter channel. So yep, just posted a link to that to everybody. Um, and so yeah, Martin, did that answer your question? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect. So would it be fair to say that the plan is for? all core devs to see what they can in implement and what is the simpler thing so that by the time the difficulty bomb starts we can we can we can yeah. do the fork yeah. of what we what, what have um i mean start to see what you can implement then i would even say as soon as possible once we get once we get kind of informal consensus then uh 
just start going ahead and implementing. As I think, uh, like, to, given that we do have, that uh, we do have uh, a, a a deadline, I think uh, trying to kind of pipeline things and just getting to work on the first half, even even while getting to consensus on uh, the on the second half, uh, would be quite sensible. So, so it's more like the reverse deadline, right? We we have the at some point the uh, bomb kicks in, right. and we want to see how much we can do until then, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, what what our goal is to give us a lot of padding, a lot of um, time for testing and for uh, potential issues implementing, um, especially across uh, the clients with the most, um, uh, I guess, client or node share. Uh, so we'll be working closely on that. And so, yeah, the, what Vitalik had said, we're going to get to this as soon as possible. Oh, what, what was that, Jeff? <laughs> no, sorry. I said something to my uh, to my girlfriend, and I was unaware that I was unmuted. Sorry. Hi, Jeff's girlfriend. Uh, she can't hear you. Oh. But I said hi to you. Oh, thank you. All right. So um, anything else, anybody? I just wanted to say that, that this was a really, really lovely uh, meeting, and I'm looking forward to more regular meetings and more structured process. Yes, me too. I think okay. this one was definitely helpful um, to get everyone um, on the same page, I guess. Yep. Yeah, thanks, Hatsu. Thanks for doing this. Yep. Uh, so what we have is, uh, yep, that's pretty much the meeting. Just to remind everybody, we have, where is it? Uh, the first and third... Fridays of every month at 1400 UTC. Uh, I'll be sending out emails to everybody about that. Um, if I don't have your email, I'll just reach out to you on Gitter and get it. Uh, I think I have almost everybody's though. And uh, if I'm missing a client um, that is significantly built, I guess, uh, or people that should be added to here, just ping me and I'll uh, get them included in this. And by the next time, we'll have a myriad of options for the calls. I'll try to test some between now and then as well. I know uh, a few people had volunteered to help me uh, test Jitsi, so we might have like a Jitsi server like locally with a lot more uh, power instead of using the public one. Yeah, but also look into Discord, please. I think it's Someone had mentioned that it has the same issues as Jitsi as far as um, disconnects. Yeah, I mean, we uh, they used to, but I think it's been improved, and it was um, Nick that said it. Um, okay. Uh, cool. It's not open source. I don't know. Does that really matter? Uh, it's more important to some people than others. We can definitely check. Oh, you know what? Before we go, who cares if this um, is this audio is presented to the public is that something that anyone has a problem with i'm not doing it yet but just i'm thinking about that as a way for people to more clearly go back and see what's going on there's no problem cool uh roman do you have a problem with that vitalik uh, no problem cool yep so it sounds if anyone does have a problem you can pm me privately and we can uh, work through that but yeah otherwise I think I'm going to start to release these publicly because that'll make it a lot easier so uh, we don't have to take as many detailed notes for the community all right great I'm not going to keep you all any longer it's exactly an hour and a half since it started uh, great call everybody and we'll see you on the first uh, Thursday all right the first Friday so that would be the third of February all right all right cool thank you guys see you thanks everybody Bye.